Hi everyone, I'm Anthony Laysons and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. I'll start off with a little joke. About 45 days into lockdown, my dog looked at me and said, yeah, now you see why I choose the furniture. And so here we are, uh, not together uh, at a distance, but also not at a distance. And it's a great opportunity for me to be here with you and to share, give you a little glimpse into uh, the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences as you uh, consider uh, 2021. I'm going to talk to you about the value add uh, proposition of our faculty, uh, what it is that makes us uh, different and attractive. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about um, quality issues, why we good, and also uh, why uh, we are relevant, and in particular in the times in which we are living, we we're going to have to be dealing with the human consequences of the uh, COVID pandemic, but also issues like uh, climate change. Um, the human aspect, the human component, even in times of great uh, technological changes, has become more important uh, than, than ever. So this is really what the facu a Faculty of Humanities is all about, is to look at uh, human interaction and to look at the social, political, economic consequences, but also how things like art, the arts, change and adapt and reflect the world that we live in. Um, I think what is important uh, for all of us, uh, also within our faculty, but for you also to consider, is that the value proposition of humanities faculties in the world that we live in really revolve around the fact that we need to reflect carefully about what is happening around us in, in the world that we're in today. We live in a world of great transformation and change. And Stephen Parker, the um, uh, former deputy VC of Monash University, in Australia a while ago said that we can no longer think of the humanities and, if you will, the hard sciences like the natural sciences in isolation. We live in a world where we have to look at the issues of our day in an interdisciplinary manner. So we need to reconcile the humanities and the, and, and the, and the natural sciences or the so-called hard sciences which includes, for instance, engineering. Um, this is an ongoing uh, process and one which we in our faculty are very much aware of and uh, which we uh, focus on and which we see as part of our uh, value proposition. So what does the mastering of content in the humanities require? It requires the ability to think independently to articulate critically and to look at the issues of our day in a creative manner and in collaboration with others. This is a very important part of the world of work today. The fact that we need to be able to work in teams, to collaborate with others, to specialize particularly in intercultural uh, communication and to acquire the so-called uh, soft skills which are in demand in a variety of employers from government to corporations to NGOs. We focus in particular in this regard on the cultural industries, the digital industries, the creative industries and the service in industries. And this is where the human interface becomes all important. This is, this is the value we add on, and this is what you will encounter in the various uh, fields and disciplines, 
courses that you will be following uh, in our faculty uh, when, when you arrive here. The other thing is that uh, we are very firmly located on this continent. Um, we're very much a part of Africa, north of us. We are Africa. So our faculty's identity and what we focus on, the challenges of the world, we look at those from within, firmly from within an African uh, context. Of course, we do this while remaining abreast of uh, developments in knowledge creation globally. We do not want to disconnect ourselves from the rest of the world. University studies is primarily also and needs to be aware of the global, the local connected uh, to the global. Our quality, I think, and what we do and what we offer is, um, is there for everyone uh, to see. Not so long ago, that excellence for our faculty was recognized in a publication which appeared in the Times Higher Education, Arts and Humanities subject ranking, where our Department of History was ranked number 23 in the world and our faculty was ranked within the top 250 to 300 humanities faculties in the world. And at the time, which was last year, when that ranking came out, our faculty was actually placed ahead of uh, the university in the rankings. So we are globally recognized for what we do. What is it that we focus on? What are our priorities? And it is important to uh, think of our priorities as the world changes. Uh, we need to adapt, we need to be versatile, and we need to be agile. Number one, academic content. Academic content has to be relevant, and it has to be in line with what the challenges are that we focus on in our world of today, and I've referred uh, to some of those. But it also has to be rel relevant to the changing uh, world of uh, work. This is very, very important. So we are constantly in a, a process of academic program renewal. Our principle that we work with, having listened to what our students want, is that rather than having many many programs, we should have programs which give our students the maximum opportunity of choice to combine subjects with, in which they have an interest and not to structure and challenge them and, and, and structure and constrain them uh, excessively in, in this regard. That is number one. So, Less is more. The second thing that we have to look, look at is how we teach. If the pandemic has taught us anything, having in March uh, retool ourselves virtually within a month from face-to-face -face teaching, and let's face it, face-to-face -face teaching is what a residential university is all about. And we are well aware of the challenges um, that everyone, both lecturers and students, have experienced the past seven or eight months where we've had to deliver our content fully online. Next year, what lies ahead? Things are looking, uh, looking up. We're moving towards normalization. But we have learned many, many things about online teaching and about how we should combine that, what the lessons are that we have learned and how we com can combine that with face-to-face -face teaching. Interaction, human interaction, connecting with your fellow students, being able to connect also physically with your lecturers is of course 
important and will remain important. But we are looking at collaborative and network teaching which will focus on hybrid learning, combining what we've learned about online learning with face-to-face -face teaching. Thirdly, while you are considering your undergraduate studies, we see the undergraduate studies as a first step towards postgraduate studies. And I would uh, now already, as you consider your options and your futures and your future here at Stellenbosch University and in our faculty, that you build into your thinking the need to continue after you have completed your first degree with postgraduate studies. So one of our uh, primary uh, focuses and priorities is also postgraduate recruitment and importantly postgraduate throughput. To do that honors, to do that master's degree. And for that, we have for a number of years a very effective graduate school in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences which focuses on supporting students uh, through seminars and workshops in their postgraduate uh, studies. So this is an important uh, priority for us. Another important priority is digital literacy. We want humanities, study, uh, humanities students to be aware of the opportunities uh, that are there by understanding and being able to work within the world of data science. We want our humanities students to not run away from the word algorithm, but to understand what algorithms are all about and to also understand that there's a human component to algorithms and that algorithms, depending on how they are created, have an output which sometimes is also biased and we want our students to engage with us. For this, our Department of Information Sciences, in close collaboration with the new School for Data Science and Computational Thinking at the university, offers real opportunities which we have built already into our undergraduate offering. And finally, we want to ensure that you continue to engage with the best academics. So in that respect, our faculty is very much focused on attracting top talent, recruiting them to increase our diversity and to ensure that within all our environments, we have the academic leadership which is required to take us forward. A study a number of years ago by the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development and the World Economic Forum identified a number of very essential skills which are required in the world of work today. And these are the skills which we as a faculty have been focusing on for a number of years within all the disciplines and departments uh, that you will be engaging with and that we've built uh, into our courses as essential graduate attributes. Graduate attributes means what will you be walking away with when you complete your studies? You'll be walking away with knowledge and content, but you should also be and will also be walking away with a number of essential skills which are part and parcel of a humanities faculty offering. Things like Empathy, even entrepreneurship, independent thinking, ethical reasoning, being globally aware, being able to negotiate, work within a group, being able to read a room, problem solving skills, relationship building, and above all, resilience. These are some of the important aspects which we focus on and which we want to ensure that you walk away with as part of your graduate attributes when you've completed your first degree. 
I've spoken about the importance and referred um, initially to our rankings, where we stand and that we are globally recognized and what we do and that what we do is of note. And here we're talking about excellence and there's no doubt that when you come to the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, you're coming to a top, top faculty globally recognized. And this is achieved through quality assurance. And it's achieved through the hard work of the lecturers, the professors that you will be engaging with. In our faculty, nearly half of the staff have a rating from the National Research Foundation, which recognizes their research output. And the research that our academics do is extremely important um, in the sense that it is reflected and connected to the courses they present and the teaching which they do. So the benefits of our top rated researchers on a variety of topics in the languages, the social sciences and the arts will be reflected in the courses that you will do um, when you come uh, to Stellenbosch University and to our faculty. We have a number of research chairs in very important themes. Professor Amanda Ghos in gender politics, Professor Cheryl Walker uh, on the theme of the sociology of land, environment and sustainable development. And we also have a research chair in science communication. You will see that these uh, are topics which reflect also the issues of the day that we engage with. Our faculty also houses a center of excellence, the DSI NRF Center of Excellence in Scientometrics, Science, Technology and Innovation Policy. I refer to our graduate output or to postgraduate studies. In 2019, this faculty delivered 65 doctoral graduates, an all-time uh, record for our faculty, and in that year, a record for the university. At the same time, we delivered 184 master students. And it's important that we deliver, maybe not such a good word to use, um, sounds like an assembly line, it doesn't need to sound, and it doesn't have to sound like an assembly line. But throughput is important. We want our master students to complete within two years and our doctoral students to complete within three years. And with the support and the dedication of our staff, we've managed to achieve outstanding results. And that quality is also reflected in our undergraduate courses where we look at students and identify students and recruit them for postgraduate studies. We have a number of centers in our uh, faculty which also produce outstanding results. Some of these centers also have, offer postgraduate programs. And I just refer to a few of them. The Center for Geographical Analysis, which looks at satellite imaging and does sterling work in cooperation with the agricultural sector under the leadership of Professor Adrian van Niekerk. We have the Center for Research on Evaluation, Science and Technology, headed up by Professor Johan Mouton, who also produce outstanding reports in collaboration with government on science policy. We have the Center for Regional and Urban Innovation and Statistical Exploration, which focuses on urban and rural planning under the leadership of Dr. Dani Duplessis. And then we have a, a center called the Research Alliance for Disaster and Risk Reduction, which looks at the human consequences and preventative policies of the challenges brought about by climate change, things like drought and fires. This is under the leadership of Dr. Robin Farah. 
I refer to our programs where less is more. Our BA in the humanities is the first stop for many of our students. It's the most popular choice because it provides you with the best possible opportunity to combine modules in which you have an interest. This has become our most popular uh, program over the last two years. But notable as well are some programs uh, which, have a more, uh, which have a more specific focus, like the BA International Studies, still offering choice, but focusing on the theme of internationalization and globalization. Another popular program is our BA in Language and Culture. Our BA in Social Work is a professionally accredited program and has been rated as the best in South Africa. Uh, they attract every year 50 to 60 uh, students. We have a BA in Development and Environmental Studies, which is housed within the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. And in the arts, our BA in the visual arts and our BA drama, which are selection courses, are popular choices. So there is much on offer, and you will be hearing in, um, in, in uh, the rest of uh, this uh, presentation where other uh, people will be talking to you, program coordinators, you'll be hearing more about the specific content that these programs offer. I hope that I've been able to give you a glimpse and a little bit of an understanding as to what our faculty is about and what you can expect to engage with when you arrive here. I want to end off with a quote uh, by Christopher Hitchens. And that quote, a simple one line says, that which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. And why do I end off with that? I end off with that to assure you that in the humanities, knowledge creation and the validation of knowledge and the reliability of knowledge is also subjected uh, to strict scientific criteria. So with that I'm saying a humanities faculty, just like any other uh, faculty at the university, is ultimately and stands the test of time in terms of the knowledge that it produces, whether that knowledge is reliable, whether it is valid, and whether it's recognized by our peers, our colleagues, and the rest of the academic world. I thank you very much for uh, listening to me, um, and I hope um, and wish you good luck with the choices uh, that you're going to have to make. But above all, I look forward to welcoming you to our faculty and our campus in 2021. Thank you very much. Good morning, students. Goedemorgen, studenten. Moweni, Bafundi. Dingo Anita Jonker, Iga Malam. My name is Anita Jonker. My name is Anita Jonker. I'm the Student Support Coordinator of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. We have about 900 to 1,000 first years uh, every year, and I'm responsible for your well being. I also uh, coordinate the extended degree program and I also teach in that program. And if you are lucky to be selected uh, to that program, you are going to have a lot of contact with me. So first of all, I'd like to congratulate you that um, you have qualified for the university or that you've been provisionally admitted. Because as you know, in South Africa, only 30% of students who are in grade one will eventually end up um, in matric. 
And of those students who qualify for university, only 68% uh, eventually go to university. So the good news is that you are part of an elite group if you have qualified for the university. The bad news is that 50% of first years in South Africa drop out and only 22% of, of students uh, finish their undergrad degree within three years. Um, the possible explanations for that is uh, the gap, the huge gap between school and university. The fact that there's a lot of emphasis on rote learning at school and that you get good marks if you regurgitate or if you give back what this, the teachers told you, which is very, very different from the mindset that we want to develop at university. Then the, the content load um, between school and university is, is quite uh, enormous. There's a lot of work that you must go through at university. And that brings me to the next point, the reading comprehension um, of students when they arrive at university is very low. And so we have started with um, a, a reading enhancement program, and I would really recommend that you join one of those programs. Um, I also think many students, when they arrive at university, they see university as a huge social party. And um, it's so important that you develop self-driven, consistent work ethic when you arrive at university. And then another factor that I've realized is that students are ignorant about the subject content. So they register for subjects, but they don't really know what the subjects are about. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the, the mindset that, that will help you a lot at university and the kind of mindset that I want you to, to encourage um, you to develop over the next few months before you arrive at university. Um, we want you to, to develop your own voice and your own intellectual perspective on things. And you can't do that if you don't read, watch, and listen to intellectual stuff. So put the computer games and the series aside for a while and start engaging with intellectual stuff. Start arguing about topical issues and develop logic and common sense. Because remember when you uh, arrive at university, we don't only want to convey information to you. The transmission mode of teaching is becoming really outdated. So when you arrive, we are going to be interested in your own cultural viewpoints, your own religious viewpoints. You might be an agnosticist or an atheist. We want to learn from you. And if you have nothing, if you haven't read anything, if you haven't watched anything, if you don't know anything about your own culture or religion, we can't learn from you and your peers can't learn from you. So there are a few practical things that you can do apart from now developing your mindset. You can go through the university calendar where all the different subjects are set out and read what the different subjects entail. Then I would also recommend that you get a year calendar because that's going to be important once you get your subject framework from the various subjects that you, that you get an overview of all your assignments for marks for the year. That's just something practical that I would um, recommend for you. Once you get to campus, you're going to register, get a student card, and really, people, if you are in residence or in a PSO, attend the welcoming program. Because in the welcoming program, they take you to the different um, academic buildings. They take you to Yumarcha, to the library, attend the welcoming program. Then just a practical uh, piece of advice, get rid of your Gmail address. Check your son learn email every day and only use that email. 
when you communicate with us. Then I would recommend that you find your residence mentor and PSO mentor because that mentor is going to give you a lot of guidance with any issues of or the, uh, that, uh, questions that you might have. Then it's so important that when you arrive at university that you don't only focus on your academics. Obviously your academic load is going to be huge, but get a routine, get a daily routine where you exercise, eat healthy, attend class, vital, and then it's not like school where anybody's going to tell you that you must go and um, do the work at home. It's self-study. You must know if you've done the work in class that you must go and do your self-study at home. Another piece of advice, don't party during the week. So from the faculty side, what we offer you, um, we have an extended degree program where students are selected based on certain criteria. And in this program, you do your first year, your, your degree over four years instead of three years. Now, think back of those students who, who end up, 22% of students um, end up doing their degree over four years in any case. Um, this is a very nicely structured program. And uh, if you are lucky enough to be selected to this program, you're going to visit various places of worship, you're going to visit parliament, you're going to engage in all kinds of critical discussions. So it's, it's a very innovative program. It is, I think, the closest that higher education came to a restitution program. So we are very proud of the, of the program in our faculty. What we have developed in our faculty to, to support you is we've developed more than 2,000 technical terms in every subject. And those terms are available on your SunLearn, and we are converting those terms to, to cell phones at the moment, a cell phone app. So you must know that that resource is available to you. So if you speak CARPS or ISICOSA, you must know that, that those resources are available for you. Most of our lectures are in a bilingual mode. Um, and increasingly, we are also making use of interpreting in Afrikaans, English, and Isikosa. The reason why we do that is not because we want you to listen to the lecturer in various languages. We want you to make your contributions during the class discussions. So if someone makes a contribution in Isikosa, you're going to have to put on your interpreting device to listen to that stu student. If someone makes a contribution in as iemand in af in kaps a uh, bijdra lewe, dan gaan jylle jylle oorvorne met opzet om na die persoon te luister. So the interpreting is not only aimed at um, conveying the lecturer's message, but it's aimed at encouraging dialogue and discussion during the lectures. Another thing that we've instituted in the faculty is the early assessment, which happens after the first six weeks of classes. And the early assessment is basically a wake-up call for many students um, to see how you've progressed, how you've adjusted to university. Um, we use various assessments like class tests, quizzes, essays, and then the results are sent to your parents or guardians. And when the classes start in the second term, we offer additional tutorials for those students who have not uh, performed well in their early assessments. And I really want to encourage you to make use of those uh, extra tutorials. This is something that I don't want to say because it sounds a bit negative, but if you realize after the first term that university is not for you, because 
university is not for everyone. It's maybe too theoretical for some people. You can deregister before the 30th of March. I know, I'm not being negative, I'm just saying that is a possibility. And then normally um, you are not accountable for the fees of the first term. That's how we try and accommodate you. But that's like not something that I want to encourage. Then, um, apart from the faculty support, there's also a lot of support on campus, available on campus. Um, the Center for Student Counseling and Development have quite a few workshops that they offer, and I really want to recommend that you, that you do those workshops. <clears throat> they are um, workshops about how you can improve your study methods, time management, stress management during tests and exams, and then um, I put the, the website on there if you want to, to go and um, explore some of the workshops. Then another um, resource that's available on campus is the Language Centre, which offers language courses. They have personal writing consultants where you can take your essay, your draft essay, and then the writing consultant will, will work with you on your essay. They have many trilingual terminology booklets as well, which complement what we do in the faculty. And they give you advice in terms of referencing. So I, I think the Language Center is, is a really um, a resource that you can, that you can help to achieve success at, at university. You know, then lastly, I want to say, some people come to university just to get a degree. They just want to get it behind them. But I want you to, to make the most of your years at university and say, study as long as possible. If you do well in your undergrad years, go for postgrad. Because I can tell you from practical experience, as a grown-up, I, I had to study further, do postgrad, eventually PhD. It's a nightmare to work and to study. So study as long as you can. If you feel that you are that you are thriving at university, continue. Do your honors, do your masters, do your PhD. Then the other thing, there's a lot of art and um, museums, music, there's the Nielsen uh, Film Theatre. In March every year, there's a word fest, word fest. Make sure that you, that you have, that you enjoy those wonderful cultural experiences as well. And then lastly, don't just get a degree, get an education for life. These are my contact details, Anita Jonker. AXYonker at sun.ac.za. You're even welcome to, to, to email me now if you have any questions. I'm really, really looking forward to welcome you at university. Hello, everybody. My name is Fiona van Kervel, and this is my colleague Janine Wallow. We work within the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, and we're here today to take you on what we call a roadmap through the BA degrees. So let's start off by understanding our faculty. Within our faculty, we have 18 departments that are divided into three groups. That's the arts, social sciences, and languages, of course. Within arts, we have visual arts, music, and drama. In our social sciences, that is what you know as history and geography in school, but we also have psychology, philosophy, political science, social work, sociology, and also anthropology. Within our languages departments, we have Afrikaans and Dutch, African languages, ancient studies, and of course, foreign modern languages. So let me take you to our academic offering. There you will see three different shades of colors. Within the blue colors, that is our general degree programs. In our general degree programs, we have a BA in humanities as, as also in language and culture. 
The orange is all the degree programs within the social sciences. That's stuff like inter- BA in international studies, in social work, in human resource management, sports science, and of course a, the very popular PPE, that is BA in philosophy, political science, and economics. And our green uh, department is our arts department, in th- and that are also selection courses. and. The degrees in those departments are a BA in Drama and Theatre Studies, BA in Music or a BMAS, and then also a BA in Visual Arts. And on this note, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Janine, who's going to take you to the next stop. There you go, Janine. Thank you, Fiona. Let this road trip begin. The first stop is in BA in Humanities. This provides access to a world of variety of programs in teaching you to read, write and learn analytically skills in identifying problems, communicate and effectively respond to changing social cultural demands and circumstances. Our second stop is within BA Language and Culture. This prepares you for language and culture related occupations such as teaching, publishing, book industry, journalism, the media and diplomatic services. Also this program is offered in an extended degree program which allows you to do the first academic year in two years. Number three is BA in Development and Environment. In this program, you learn professional management skills such as communication, conflict management, and the management of change in an environment and community. The fourth program is BA in Human Resource Management. The development of human capital is key to economic progress. Human resource managers use their knowledge of industrial psychology, a major subject, to develop and manage employees. I'll give over to Fiona now. So let's start with the BA in International Studies. Uh, With training in economic and political issues and languages such as French, German and Mandarin, this program is your key to an exciting career in tourism, in the media industry, in international organizations or anywhere over the world where you'd like to go. A BA in Law is a program that lays the foundation for advanced legal studies and this program also gives you access to the postgraduate LLB program. A BA in Political, Philosophical and Economic Studies, or what we call a PPE, a very popular program, has a focus on South African issues and context. And this is a program that is interested, it is specially aimed at people who are interested in management or investigating journalism or even law or diplomatic services. It really opens a world within the context of South Africa. And of course, social work is very important. So this is the, this degree prepares you as a professional social worker and enables you to register with the South African Council for Social Services and Professions. A BA in sports science is for as as you know, South Africa is a sport crazy country. So this career, this degree, equips you for a career in sports science, sports psychology, research, biokinetics, fitness, or even just teaching If and if you want to work with people with disabilities. That brings us to our last department. Within the Department of Arts, we have specialized degree programs. As mentioned, in drama and theater studies, this one prepares you for a career In the media, whether it will be in radio, film, TV industries, whether you want to be in front of the camera or behind the scenes, a BA in visual arts opens the world of arts for you. We have three streams, namely our fine arts, visual communication, as well as jewelry design. So if you want to become a graphic designer or a jewelry designer, that's the way to go. Then let's end off with music. In music, we have two undergraduate programs. We have a Bachelor of Music, that is what we call the BMAS, that's a four-year program. 
this degree offers specialized training to prepare you not only as a music teacher but also as a performing musician. A BA in music is a three-year program and this co you can combine music with the option of gaining experience in any other field which you'd like to add, even if it's a language or maths, and then the world is open for you. Music also offers undergraduate diplomas in practical music as well as an advanced diploma in practical music, also a higher certificate in music, and that brings us to the end of our journey. So Janine, we really enjoyed taking these students on this road trip. So let's end off with this quote by Marcus Aurelius. You have the power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find your strength. See you in the world of BA. Hi everyone. I am Dr. Adams van der Waal and I would like to tell you more about the academic offering of the Department of Visual Arts. As a prospective first year student, there's a variety of exciting programs that you can choose from. Our department is internationally recognized for offering award-winning programs in jewelry design, fine art, and visual communication design. In addition to our practical offering, we also have a theoretical program called Visual Studies, in which we equip our students with the skills to become leaders in their fields, be it as curators, art writers or researchers in visual media. Meanwhile, our practical art and design programs combine industry-oriented studio practice with other BA subjects, which are taken with students from across the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. We pride ourselves in producing students who can respond creatively and intelligently to the complex and shifting nature of our contemporary society and job market. As future designers and artists, our students are skilled at generating new knowledge through a range of research skills, as well as forms of technological innovation. Our undergraduate program links two-dimensional art-making practices, such as drawing, photography, printmaking, typography, illustration and painting, with three-dimensional practices such as sculpture, metalwork and goldsmithing. These techniques are also combined with progressive new media technologies in order to equip our students with specialized art and design skills. Our four-year practical program is the equivalent of an honors degree, and this enables students to continue their studies by entering a range of master's programs, be it locally or internationally. Our highly skilled staff offer postgraduate degrees all the way through to doctoral level. Some of our notable alumni include artists and designers such as Akim and Gwenya, MI Collective, Claudette Screders, and Daniel Nundia, to name but a few. So whether you decide to follow one of our practical or theoretical programs, you will become part of an innovative family of creative practitioners and thinkers. Our degrees are exciting, challenging and competitive, and we would love to have you in our department. Hello, I am Professor Andris Vasaghi from the Department of Afrikaans and Dutch at Stellenbosch University. When I was a student in the 1980s, yes, the previous century, I was a student uh, in language and culture and my subjects were Afrikaans and Dutch, German, French, English, and general linguistics. And today, I am the coordinator of this very same degree, BA Language and Culture, and I would like to talk to you about some of the possibilities and the exciting offerings that we have in this degree. The main aim of this uh, degree is to um, offer you the opportunity to, to learn a number of new languages, or to continue with some of the languages that you had at school. And in addition to that, we also have some cultural subjects like history, psychology, and ancient cultures. Now, the language subjects that we have on offer are the following. Afrikaans and Dutch, English, Corsa, German, Greek, Latin, and wait for it, Chinese. There's only one com compulsory subject in this degree uh, at first year level, and that is general linguistics. 
And furthermore, you are welcome to pick and choose some of the, the subjects that are on offer. Um, now, each department offers a number of specialities and boasts some really good achievements. I will uh, focus on only one of uh, these departments, and that's my own, the one I know best, the Department of Afrikaans and Dutch. And I will now switch to Afrikaans to address the Afrikaans-speaking students. In the Department of Afrikaans and Netherlands, it has three directions that I want to tell you more about. The first one is lexicography, the kunst van of making my colleague, Professor Rufus Gaus, is an international bekende um, academicus op the gebied van die lexicografie. En hy doen bijvoorbeeld navorsing oor die uitdagende skuif wat thans gebeur vanaf die papier woordeboek na die digitale medium. Hy was vroeger ook betrokken by een woordeboek wat jy, baie van julle waarschijnlijk ken, die had of die handwoordeboek van die Afrikaanse taal. Tweedens het ons ook een baie succesvolle kreatieve skryfkunstprogram onder leiding van die hertogprijswinner Dr. Willem Anker en die Nederlandstalige gedichter Alfred Schaffer. Van ons oud-studenten wat in hierdie uh, kursus meegemaak het, sluit in Dion Meijer, Bibi Slippers en S. Unidee, allemaal schrijvers wat baie succesvol is in Afrikaans. En dan derdens is daar een nagraadse opleiding wat in ons departement bestaan rondom vertaling en tolking. Baie studenten neem hierdie kursus om hulle self op te leiden as vertalers, as redigeerders en ook as um, tolken natuurlijk. Die navorsing wat gedoen word sluit bijvoorbeeld in tolken wat binnen gemeenskapsverband plaasvind in hospitale en ook binnen die uh, veeltalige werk, werkplek. Now, I hope that gives you an idea of what you can choose and what exciting subjects uh, are, you can uh, consider. And if language is your passion, I would like to invite you to consider registering for BA Language and Culture at Stellenbosch University. Hi, my name is Austin Pepper, finally a PA Humanities student, and I'm not alone. I'm here with this beautiful darling here. Um, my name is Tandrin Mikwe, and I'm a second year humanities student. So at this point, you're probably wondering, what is the Arts and Social Science faculty about? It's the most dynamic and the biggest, one of the biggest faculties on our campus. Um, so I'll instead be speaking about all that you can find on um, our campuses and in our faculty specifically. So in terms of support, because I'm sure that's what you want to know most of, yeah. we have BOSC, which is BA Student Committee, and I served on it. Um, and you have your amazing tutors and you have your class reps. So BOSC is essentially, I'd like to call it the SRC of the faculty. When, whatever prob problems <laughs> you have, go to BOSC, email them, go to their offices, they're always there to help your tutors when you don't understand something and your class reps when you just need clarity on anything to do with any of your faculty mm. or subject um, problems. So Austin, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Okay, okay. Um, so how did you find out about Stellenbosch University? Um, I found out about Stellenbosch University through the WOW um, program that I was doing at the time on Inmatric. Um, so WOW is about just is this organization that just helps students, you know, with their matric results and just making sure that they um, pass and do well academically in, mm. in preparation for um, university life. Um, so that's how I found out about it. And when I came to university, I was like, oh, OK, cool. This is what university is about. Mm. Um, in addition to the other things that are exciting in terms of a student life. Um, on this campus. So things such as residences, PSOs, and, 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 and just, um, just work, work life in general as a student. So those are the kind of things that I came in, in contact with as a student here in my first year. So, you know, Very interesting you say yeah. words. Um, wow, because wow, yeah. I came to know about Stella Mosh because I was in my top 10 oh, of okay. a class class yes. and we came to Wurt VS. So I was like, Wurt who? <laughs> it was such an amazing event and it was so nice seeing just um, how big this campus was and just interacting with other peers of mine who do Afrikaans, especially doing Afrikaans as a black uh, child, no. you know, that was just an amazing um, 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 segment that they have for us. 
Last question. So, which is your favorite place to study in? Favorite place to study in? Let me see, let me see. It depends on my mood at the time, mm -hmm. but most likely your marcha, and your marcha is this um, computer area mm -hmm. <laughs> in the Arts and Social Science faculty. It's on the third floor, but people also call it like the village because it's very <laughs> noisy and stuff. It's vibrant. So, it's very vibrant. <laughs> <laughs> so, people with our kind of personalities will be there mm -hmm. um, studying and stuff. So, that's why I like, you know, the energy and the vibrancy and just the dynamics of that environment and mm. I love just being there in that Definitely. space. So yes. I wouldn't say Humarcha, I'd what? say the library. Humarcha okay. is quite cool <laughs> but you come to meet a lot of cold rooms in Salabash so watch out for that one. Yeah. Just always bring a jacket. Where, where is your, where is, which is the most coldest venue for you? Oh no honey, um, Wilcox, yes. where I get Pulsai. <sighs> Very cold. Three zero zero one or one one zero one zero. All of them. All of them. All of them. Do you have it? Very cold. But just to end off on just um a very like a motivational point, um I am a first generation student and I know how terrifying that must be especially coming from a family that doesn't necessarily know what to expect when coming into university, whatever the case might be. All I'm going to say is just ask. Mm. Always, always ask because there are a lot of things you're not going to know and there are a lot of things that you can clarity on and you're going to get lost yeah. on everything. So just ask, always seek support and there's so many support systems that are True. available, not only from your peers, but your family and um, your mentors and res and PSOs and um, your tutors, lecturers, and bask in the BA faculty. Yeah, yeah. So just ask. And like she said, like just always ask and always the support systems are there for you. Like the mm. EDP program that we have um, in the faculty was so meaningful to me supportive and, and as supportive well. as mm. well. And like when we talk about transformative student experience, I can only think of um, the meaning behind the EDP program and mm. what that has done for so many students. Mm. So it's important for you to just be mindful of that and, and, and just reach out to your lecturers, reach out to your peers and all of those things and as a first to just put yourself out there mm. grab all every opportunity that comes your way mm. um and just immerse yourself to the vibrancy and the campus culture yeah. and then you'll 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 do well you'll do well yeah. and just have the right people behind you that's, that's true that's very true. very important mm -hmm. i think also just stem off what you said it's very important to experience things yeah. put yourself out there because university can go by so quickly to every opportunity that comes in invite it in give it a cup of coffee and you know just 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 have fun so pretty, just have fun just with have it fun. and yeah. with that i also want to add that it's so important to always recognize that university is not a one-dimensional experience it's 100%. not just about academics there yeah. are things such as leadership um, development courses that you can do mm. you can you know just like i said immerse yourself in, in in campus life and just put yourself out there and make a name for yourself Amen. so yeah, it's a very <laughs> Important. Yeah. So, and we believe in you and look at where we've come, how far we've come so far. Like yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's been an amazing journey and mm -hmm. I hope you guys are going to really enjoy it as much as we are. Yes. Um, it's okay to fall. We fall yeah. and we get up and still look nice. Dust yourself off, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank guys. you so much. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome prospective Marty students and parents. My name is Dr. Samantha Williams and I'm a lecturer in the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies here at Stellenbosch University. While 2020 can be and will be remembered as the year that we face the novel coronavirus and all of us needed to adapt to a new way of doing things, even having a recorded Marty's 101 session, this is also the year that the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies here at Stellenbosch celebrates its centenary. Geography at Stellenbosch, therefore, have over the last 100 years seen various scholars and students contribute to its growth and rooting geography as a, a discipline to study and to research. We are therefore very proud and excited looking forward to the next 100 years of geography at Stellenbosch University and we hope that you will be part of it. So over the next few minutes I would like to share some information on our BA Development and Environment Program as well as why studying geography and environmental uh, geography would be a good choice for you. So what does our BA Development and Environment Program look like? 
when you decide to enroll for one of the BA programs here in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, and more specifically, our BA Development and Environment Program, your degree program consists of three core disciplines. This includes geography and environmental studies, sociology and social anthropology, and development management, public and development management, which is taught in the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences. The program structure in the first year of study will see you complete five subjects. In your second year of study, this will be four subjects. And in your third and final year of the program, you will do two and a half um, subjects. In our first year of geography and environmental studies, you will study both physical and human geography. This will see us exploring earth sculpting processes, which includes plate tectonics, weathering, and mass movement. We will explore desert environments and also look at various soil properties. In the human geography courses, we will explore uh, themes such as population dynamics. We will look at urbanization, farming and food supply practices, as well as explore concepts such as economic development and globalization. The three-year degree program and others offered in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences with their model combinations and their descriptions, as well as other information such as credit weighting of subjects are all contained in our Faculty of Arts yearbook. If you go onto the Stellenbosch website, all of these handbooks and yearbooks can be downloaded. So it would be really very useful to have a look at some of those yearbooks. And for any information that you are looking for, you may also direct any questions or queries to the respective program coordinators that are listed in these yearbooks. So why consider a degree where you will study geography and environmental studies? And what will this mean for you career-wise? Geography is therefore a facilitating subject, meaning that you can find career opportunities in many different fields. We therefore do not train you to become a geographer or teaching is not the only profession that you can enter after your three-year degree. Therefore, if you enroll for a degree, um, such as a BA in Development and Environmental um, Studies, you will gain a wide range of employable and transferable skills. And these may include gaining subject knowledge that is highly relevant to the challenges facing society today. Also transferable skills, which includes spatial and environmental analysis, as well as other qualitative and quantitative um, skills, strong analytical and research skills, and an ability to also judge evidence and work across the social and the natural sciences. You will also be able to look at complex and different environmental problems and how these relate to each other at different scales and also at different perspectives. You will finally gain an interest and examine big and complex environmental challenges that we face today in the world and also how these are ultimately very interconnected. These are some of the requirements and skills that prospective employees look for in their prospective employees. And after completing your undergraduate degree, there are also the options to engage in postgraduate studies, which includes honors, masters, and your doctoral studies. If you are interested in the world, if you are interested at in looking at complex environmental issues, and look at this from a diverse range of perspectives, then this degree is definitely for you. There's therefore never been a more exciting and also appropriate time to be studying geography and environmental studies. With more growing interest in issues such as migration, climate change, and also environmental degradation and how these will all affect our planet as well as the societies that live in the world, geography is one of the most relevant courses that you can apply for. If you have any questions or any specific questions related to any of the offerings in the department, you might direct this to the program coordinators or hop onto our departmental website where all our relevant information is or check out any of our social media pages. We look forward to welcoming you to our program, to the department and to Stellenbosch University.